execution by the Phillies pitchers or lack thereof from your hitters? Which is the biggest factor? Yeah, first of all, I think there's several areas um, in, in a lot of the games that we've got to tighten up. And that's what we're talking about right now is we're, is we're working out here in Philly. But specifically speaking um, about our offense, uh, yes, I, I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the Philly pitchers, uh, especially their one, two, and then back to their one, um, have been really, really effective against us. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's a mixture of pitches. It's keeping us off balance. It's a good pitching plan, attacking attacking zones that that um, that might be some, you know, certain limitations for certain hitters. So that's a. Um, and then B, I, I think, and this is where I hold every one of us accountable. Um, I think we're just making some poor swing decisions. I think we're chasing certain counts. We're aware of pitches and certain counts they are doing their math. And then, you know, we see the pitch and it might be a ball or two off of where we're looking at it. And I think we have that mentality that we're just trying to do everything on every pitch. And we got to remember that in order to get a certain pitch that you want to square up you got to maybe get into into the count get some count leverage have seen the pitch know where it's going to start know where it's going to land and then effectively um, determine where it's going to be so you can barrel it up so I, I'm hoping that you know things click in a way that we've seen it over the first couple of series but I want to put it on us because I feel like to get to where we're going and the things that we got to do um, to to win series and and climb that mountain, we've got to be able to beat every type of pitcher, no matter who they are and what type of stuff they have on that given day. Next question. Jesse Friedman. Hey, Tori. Uh, I, I know you've talked a lot throughout the year about your relationships with with coaches and you know within baseball outside of baseball. Just wonder uh, going into this this big moment in Philadelphia, if any words of encouragement or insight or anything have stood out in any conversations you've had with any of those people. Um, yeah, you know, I think at this time of the year, most of the coaches um, are just wishing me luck and 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 letting me know that they're generally pulling for, for me in this ball club. Um, and what they're noticing is how we, how we play the game, the things that we do that are right. And just, and just the connected way in which we go about our business and, and, and mostly from a culture standpoint. Now the X's and O's, the ins and the outs, I don't think they're, they're watching close enough um, to determine what's going right on a daily basis. Um, but I will say the best interaction and the best, the best, conversation I had was probably with Joe Torrey. Um, we were here in Philadelphia for games one and two, and and we laughed a little bit and reminisced and talked about the hardships of 20 and 21, um, the conversations that he and I had about how to work through those tough times. And, and you know, now that we've come out the other end and here we are playing, you know, on the eve of our first game of the NLCS, we talked about how good it is to kind of stay with who you are and what you believe in. And those were, those were great conversations then and even better conversations now. Uh, and he continued, um, he, he urged me to continue being myself, continue doing the things that I have done to get this team uh, to play the way they have, because it's very noticeable every single day. So it's a combination of everything. I think everybody, all the coaches that understand what a daily grind it is and where you are um, that aren't specifically telling me that they, they do notice that we're playing at a very high level. And then Joe Torrey kind of solidified that for me. So it was a really nice moment for me to spend with Joe. Cameron Cox. Hey, Torrey, you got me. Hi, Cam. I got you. Yep. Hey, um, what is this? If you could just sum up this playoff run to this point, what you often talk about people and this run is about people that you've been around just What's it like for you, your family, you know, the guys on this team, this this organization to like get this far and to just be in this moment? Have you had a chance to just kind of look around and and take it all in at all? I try to. Um, I know when it's going to be, you know, the first week of November, I'll have a chance to really sit down and dissect it and appreciate it a little bit differently. But every once in a while, I, I, I step up on the top step of the dugout, especially Chase Field and try to drink it up, um, drink up what's happening, uh, and, and just appreciate 
where this team is and, and what we're fighting for every single day. We're in the National League Championship Series. We're playing game six tomorrow night. Uh, and I, I couldn't be any more excited about where we are and the sacrifice and the commitment that we made as a front office, um, um, together with the front office, sacrifice that, that we've all made together with the players. And coming out the other end, it's a very gratifying feeling, but we're not satisfied. We're not to that point yet where we said, you know, this is this is the end result. This is definitely not the end result. We got more work to do. So that's why I can't give you the full answer, but yeah, I, I spend, I spend time drinking it up when I, when I need to, because I don't want to take any part of what's going on for granted because we've been as high as you can get right now. And I know a very short time ago, we were, we were in a very dark spot as well. Steve Gilbert. Hey, Tori, just curious if you guys were able to get out on the field today or do any hitting or or did the guys show up at the ballpark? Kind of what was your schedule today? Yeah, schedule was we landed, came straight here, um, geared up, went out and started working out about an hour and 20 minutes ago. So, um, yeah, all the all the pitchers came in through. We had bullpens that were thrown. Um, everybody got their work in. We got our defensive work in and not, they're 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 winding up in the with a final group right now. Our workout will, will conclude at eight o'clock. I think perhaps the coolest part of the day was getting a police escort all the way from the um, from the airport to the um, to the field and having to pass by Philadelphia Eagle fans because they're playing right now or getting ready to play. So, yeah, it felt like felt like we were we we had we had that that big man energy and we were going right through cutting through them like butter. So it was nice to get here, get back on the field, feel this cool air. It's very cold out there right now. Uh, it's not 105 as it was in 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 Phoenix, so I was glad that we were able to um, get on the field and, and and get some quality work in. Passing. Hey, Tori, stolen bases yeah. have been such an integral part of your guys' success this season, and you've got just one this series. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, I just think the Phillies have done a great job of creating awareness um, and, um, and understanding that uh, or giving us the understanding that they're they're working hard to shut down the running game. You know, their their pitchers are consistently delivering quality pitches in that in that one three to one three five range, um, and they're very unpredictable. And they're just doing a good job of of paying attention to whoever it is at first base, not just Corbin Carroll, you know, who's got the 80 speed, who's got 50 plus stolen bases. We'll steal bases on in, on anybody at any time, but they, mm -hmm. they've been doing a good job of getting the ball to home plate. On top of that, they've been doing a really good job of mixing up their looks and their timing. Um, and, you know, you got to give credit where credit is due, but we got to be as creative as possible to get that, to get that portion of our game going. Cause it is such a, a connecting, um, uh, it's it's such an important piece of our puzzle as we're connecting dots through the course of a game because it's a ton of energy. So we got to get that figured out. I was going to say when they're scheming successfully and when you've got guys getting to the plate as quickly as they are, how as a base runner can you combat that? Um. Yeah. Without giving it away, giving away any of our thoughts or our secrets that we're we're talking about right now. Um, you just got to be situationally aware of, of whatever a key is or whatever that that timing is and just get the best jump possible. What I feel like is, um, especially in power starting pitcher stuff, they need a chance to, to, to gather themselves, get loaded up. And, um, you know, that takes a little bit of time through the delivery, especially with a lot of moving parts. Um, they may they may, may, may make a mistake at home plate. So we're taking that mindset. If they're hurrying and hustling in their delivery to, to get the ball to pl the plate or their catcher to control the running game, that that is some noise that we feel like we should be able to take advantage of. Unfortunately, up to this point, we have not. So we got to be better at home plate when there's some quality runners at first base that are causing this pitcher to get the ball to home plate a little bit quicker. Thanks, Tori. Mm -hmm. Cam Cox. Tori, does it give you guys some extra confidence kind of considering all the situations you guys have been in this year? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're a battle tested team. Um, and you could tell this team is full of grit. We don't back down for, on anybody. Um, we we're going to go out there and fight you no matter what, 
what we have in our in our in our deck or in our hand at that moment we're going to give it give it all we have and we're going to fight you um you know i don't want to sound like it's it's sour grapes right but we haven't played our best baseball through the course of the series and you know it it could happen at any time and when it does we can get hot and compete with anybody um at any time so you know, we've had some good innings we've had some good moments but I don't think we pieced together a full nine inning game where I could say I'm very satisfied. So that's our goal right now. Um, this team is hungry. They're ready. And, you know, I want to make sure that tomorrow night we're going to go out there and, and do our job to the highest, or to the best of our ability at the highest level possible. Alex, where Alex. Hey, Tori. Um, what have you been seeing from Christian at the plate in this series? And do you think a couple of hard hit balls last game is sort of a turning of the corner? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to believe so. Um, I know that he he's barreled up a couple balls. I think there was a double down the left field line yesterday. So I, I always believe that that our hitters, our quality hitters are one pitch away from getting that rhythm and getting that feel back and creating some barrel awareness and getting the job done. Um, you know, a little bit of what I talked about earlier. I, I do want to give credit where credit is due. I just think we got to be a little bit smarter and better overall as an offense. But Christian's getting pitched to a little bit at that top bar, the top of the zone. So he's just got to lower his sights a little bit and, and look for the pitch in the area that he can handle or drive out of the ballpark. He's just a quality hitter, and I know he feels like he can hit any pitch out of the ballpark at any time. But um, I think I think he's just fighting, fighting too many pitches throughout the whole zone. He's just got to shrink it up a little bit, and he'll be just fine. Awesome. Dory, I know Gabby stayed in the game after the collision in the first inning. Is he feeling any effects of it now, or is he uh, ready to go for tomorrow? He He's ready to go. Um, he's been examined by our team physician yesterday, continuing. He's, he's continuing to be looked at today. Um, he's he's obviously here because the bus came straight here, and he's being there. There's no monitoring. There's just an update as to how he's feeling. He has not entered the concussion protocol. protocol and should be in the lineup tomorrow. Cam. Laura, can you just speak to his toughness and kind of what that has meant to the team? I mean, he's been hit three or four times, it seems like, and gets back up every time. I know brushes you aside to stay in the game. Just what does that do for the rest of the guys? Yeah, I love the fact that he's playing a very rugged position at a high level and then can take a jolt or two. And it's not just what happened yesterday. It was also a foul ball that – that got hit off of the, the the bottom bar of his face mask that 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 got him yesterday as well in about the seventh or eighth inning. So he's just a tough kid. He's just a tough kid and um, just plays a very rugged position and accepts that responsibility. You know, um, the Harper slide. It, there was nothing malicious about it. He, it's just two two players confer, converging on the same same part of home plate. And he caught a shoulder and, uh, you know, you hated to see it, but he's laying down on the field there. He gets up, rolls over and says he feels fine and he wants to stay in the game. So it's been very consistent with every time that something like that has happened. Um, and we're just thankful that he's OK. But, yeah, we love his toughness. I think it's it's a huge it's a, hu it's a huge piece of who he is. Any other questions for Tor Jack Summers? Um, Tori, Merrill spoke just a little bit about um, the familiarity aspect, uh, you know, having gotten uh, out on the mound there, getting his sight lines, um, you know, mm -hmm. getting used to the crowd. Um, you know, I'm just wondering if um, the rest of the guys may be, feel, may be a little bit more prone to make a quicker adjustment um, to the environment that you're going to be playing in tomorrow night. Yeah, it's a real thing. It's a real environment. This crowd is very loud. Um, you know, their top end is is – is about what we heard um, at Chase over the past couple of days, but they're just, they're intense, you know, for, for nine innings. Um, th there's a certain buzz that they maintain a certain level that they maintain from pitch to pitch. Um, so this crowd is something that we got used to over the two days that we we're here. 
Um, and whether it's loud for us or loud for them, we both have to hear it. We both got to deal with it. So uh, we just might have a chorus of boos over the cheers, but I think our guys are conditioned for that. Um, but I know this team is excited to be back here in Philly. There was obviously a chance after losing the first two that we wouldn't be making this trip back across country. So first of all, getting this workout in, um, getting sidelines here, getting everything, re getting reacquainted with everything was important. That's why we're working out. And then it's just gear up tomorrow and go get it. Um, it's it's game six and we got to win game six because there's there's nothing behind that. Um, and I'm not going to worry about game seven, but I will say this game sevens are game sevens for a reason and anything can happen. But we got to get there. So we're, we're, we're going to do our absolute best tomorrow to get through um, and play our type of baseball game and hopefully come out on the right end.